I will try that again. We had it muted. Uh, well, good afternoon, and, and thank you for uh, for joining us. Uh, it's today is the two twenty show. Yes, it's two twenty. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it seems to us that uh, there are a lot of people going live on Facebook. So between uh, this system that we're using, which has been fantastic, uh, as long as we operate it right, works well. Uh, others uh, others have, have logged up the system, so we're glad we're up and running. And so thank you for for being patient with us. Uh, we got a few text messages reminding us that we weren't live, so uh, we got you. So thank you again for uh, for tuning in. Oh, we got a special show today. Yes, we do. Linda Barron, uh, the uh, head of the uh, Staten Island Chamber of Commerce will be joining us today and hopefully sharing some information for our Staten Island community and for uh, businesses on Staten Island. Yeah, and we appreciate her popping in. Uh, but first, uh, we, we're going to add to the things that we've learned. So if you tuned in earlier in the show, uh, we talked about the things that we've learned. And so we're still learning. Uh, we could now add, uh, we discovered the sound issue yesterday. Uh, you, if we, When we bring a guest on, you can't watch the live stream on the same device that you're trying to stream in with us. It knocks out the sound. sound. And then two, now we could just add that way too many people are trying to do this. Thing. Yes. <laughs> Space your live feeds out. Space them out. We're going to have to send a note. People, at two o'clock is our time. That's our time. That's, That's our, our time. time. Stay off the system. Leave it alone. Let us let us have our time and you can ha have your time. Uh, we have to say thank you. Uh, this is episode 11. Uh, I'm starting to lose track of days and, and uh, the number of days we've been cooped up and quarantined and the number of episodes. Uh, but this has been fantastic. We can and do a little drop thing over here, a little we counter. Oh, we have. I'm sure we can. We can do that. We can rig that up. We can use our mood calendar for it. Uh, <laughs> because you, you, you are watching us, uh, our, our videos have gotten over 29,000 views. And after today, we know it'll hit over uh, 30,000 views, which is pretty impressive. And they're not just drive-by views, guys. You, you know, when you look at how that adds up, you have three-second, ten-second views. A lot of you are sticking in there and watching our show, so we appreciate you uh, being there with us. Hey, uh, we're going to bring we're going to bring Linda in. Linda, the president and CEO of the Staten Island Chamber of Commerce, and welcome back. Um, yeah. Is with us this afternoon. And check this out. I think we got this, Linda. Hi. Hey, I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> How, are How are you doing today? We're good. How are you today? I'm good. Keeping busy over here, that's for sure. Are you? Hey, Frank. I want to thank you for for, for inviting me on the show. And and Naz, I mean, uh, you guys are you know wonderful community people. I mean, and just you know opening up and, and providing information. I, I remember after Hurricane Sandy, I was just thinking about how you opened your doors and everybody was dropping off clothes and all kinds of things and. You know, you're always there. You know, uh, I saw the other day you were delivering pizzas and 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 Naz. I know that you've been doing the masks. So God bless the both of you because you, you you're wonderful. We we try. We're Thank just you. doing what we do. We're just doing. What <laughs> we, do. we we couldn't do it without. And you you've been great to us without your support and, and the rest of the, uh, those in, in our. Not only we talk about this a lot, but our bowling community itself, uh, out within this building, and then expands outside allows us to have that reach and so we we can't do it without them a fantastic team here so we appreciate the kind words uh this has been fun uh, i know you've been have you've had a fun 15 days or so uh are you home are you at the office what's going on i am home i'm in my kitchen <laughs> i'm working off my kitchen table every day because my son actually still goes to school so he's using the computer desk downstairs for his class instruction so i'm in the kitchen <laughs> Lucky you. I, I, you haven't. What was the last time you saw all this time in your own in your own house? What? No, oh my God! My son is like thrilled to pieces because he's getting a meal every night. <laughs> I get home too late to cook, and uh, I've been stocking up on food, so I got all kinds of food here. So he's like very happy about that. But I really, I'm at, I'm out more than I'm in. So I mean, you know, it's kind of a, it's good, but it's bad because there's a little bit of a curse because when you're working from home, you you know you're working all day long. So you know, you just 
keep it going. You know, get, 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 get every, I tell everybody, though, in this situation, everybody needs to unwind, kind of watch the news only once a day. Don't watch it all day long because you'll make yourself crazy with everything that's happening in this world. You know, it's just kind of, but it is nice to be able to at least, uh, you know, be with your family. My, my family and myself, we all uh, did Zoom meeting last night. So my daughter lives in Pennsylvania and my other son lives on Staten Island and my mom lives uh, up in Lake George. So we all got on Zoom meeting, which was kind of nice. So it was our, our own way of kind of pulling everybody everybody together. That, that's awesome. And th this has allowed us to connect with so many different people uh, at different times. And we keep reminding everybody, don't take this for granted. Yeah. Uh, and that's awesome that you're doing that with your family. Uh, we're seeing a lot of people do it, which is really cool. Uh, Zoom has, uh, is, 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 is in our new language. People didn't know about it before. We were using it for meetings. And here we are having virtual parties and dinners right. and catching up with people. <laughs> how, how, are you, how are you staying in touch with your staff during all of this? Uh, we're at the meetings. We have a once a morning. We have a, a full staff meeting for about an hour and go over kind of the latest developments on everything. And uh, and actually, our staff has been using Zoom meetings. We did a a couple of webinars this past week. We did one on the some of the loans that. Um, New York City Department of Small Business Services are offering, and uh, we also partnered with the SBDC here on Staten Island about the first the idle loans that came out through the SBA. So we did that, and then the, the staff has also just been doing outreach to our members. We've been actually making phone calls and doing emails and just kind of seeing where everybody's at with their business and what they're doing. So, and so I want to I want to back up a little bit because. I think it's important. There have been, you've made a lot of changes at the chamber in the last couple of years and more noticeably in the last, I would tell you in the last six months, I know you guys are working on a new strategic plan, which you reached out to, to your members. We, you, we got surveyed. There were these great conversations. And so halt, this of course puts a halt in business. <laughs> so, pr so prior to this, what's been going on at the chamber? Well, you know, we've been working internally on, on our staff and improving our staff and looking at the services we provide because a lot of chambers have kind of this reputation of being like old school organizations. You know, they, they have golf outings, they have annual galas, they have these types of events. And, you know, in the past, that was something that the chambers really, you know, that's how they fund, they raise funds. They basically provide business support services. They collected membership dues, but they also um, ran programs to increase their revenue, you know, to, to, to make money to basically to support the business community. And, you know, we continue, continue to do some of that stuff, but we've dropped off on some of our major events and we've gotten more focused on the business service side of everything. So that's, uh, we've also been able to get some grants to support um, some of the work that we do, but really it's really being more focused on kind of being more relevant going into the future. Um, you know, things like, you know, virtual webinars and things like that are part of our plan. Um, you know, just providing business assistance um, to kind of uh, individual businesses. We've always done small mom and pops on Staten Island. We don't have a lot of large corporate businesses and we've always been there for the mom and pops, but I don't think we get out there enough and people realize kind of the resources that the chamber provides. And, and, and it's kind of going back to our core, how do we help businesses and how do we make them successful and, and how do we provide all the different things that they need, but kind of in today's world and, and attracting more young people. We do have a young professionals group at the chamber and we do try to provide more information to, you know, what the, one of the areas that's a little bit of a struggle is trying to get um, minority and women-owned businesses more connected to the chamber. Um, they particularly go out for city services, but a lot of the different um, immigrant populations kind of stay in their own communities. But there's a lot of resources out there that that can that everybody can avail themselves to. So it, it's really kind of just it's really more our messaging and our communication and and letting people know what the chamber has and, and, and you know how much help we can provide them. I could say as uh, chamber members ourselves that we've definitely noticed the difference in uh, outreach from your staff, which I thought was really great. Really wanting to target what we needed from uh, the chamber. So we, yeah, we like that. We yeah, we've had, we've We've had like a lot of workshops specific to like what do the chamber members want and need, you know, and they really don't want to go out to events. They really want just the information. They want to be they want to be able to access the information, get it quickly and be able to digest it and understand it. And they don't necessarily and they want one on one conversations, but they don't necessarily, you know, want to go out to you know, a myriad of events anymore. So it's really kind of making sure, too, that the communication that we're providing, you know, the, the, the information like we are currently right now with the COVID-19 
situation, you know, the businesses really have a sense that this this information is information that's valuable to me that I can read and I can understand and that, you know, it, it's not just a bunch of fluff that's out there on, you know, any individual topic. I mean, you know, we've been focused, there's a lot of information from the Department of Health and, and, and the impact, but we've been focused on, you know, the, the non-essential and the essential businesses and advising them on what to do, uh, you know, to, to kind of really like figure out what options are out there for them. I mean, right now it's very confusing because the loan programs are coming out and the, the federal government just passed everything the other day. So trying to make sure that people understand that, hey, this program's coming out, but you know, you also have to pay attention and not just kind of jump the gun and, and apply, but really kind of look at what's the lay of the land and, and what's the most beneficial program to make because some programs could negate other programs, um, you know, it's it, it's it's complicated. And when you're running a business, you know, most what I hear from most business owners is, I know how to run my business in terms of like, you know, from a hair cutter or from a, you know, I'm 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 an expert in bowling or whatever the case may be. But when it comes down to some of the questions in relation to running a business, um, they don't have the time to call the different agencies and get all the different information. So if you can, if the ch chamber can gather that for you and provide that information to you at one spot, it just makes the world a difference because you don't have to spend all that time trying to figure it out on your own. It's, it's really tr us doing things that you can't do for yourself. So if there's a, a business uh, right now that's on Staten Island that is struggling trying to wade through all these different programs and uh, whether they overlap with each other or like you said, negate each other, would they be able to reach out to the chamber for help? Yeah, I mean, typically we're a member organization and we, we typically only serve our members, but in times like these and other crises, we open our doors to all businesses. So we want to help everybody. We want everybody to to have as much success as possible, or at least try to get through these, these uh, difficult times uh, and, and and keep them afloat. So they can reach out to the chamber. All my staff is, is fully operational. You can go on our website and reach out to any, any one of us through our email addresses. Thank you, Linda. Yeah, that's great. You're welcome. To me, th th those are the most important things of a membership organization. And even uh, even here in bowling, in the United States Bowling Congress and, and the, our trade association, if we could provide these services, we hope that this this is an avenue to find a, a new member. Correct. Uh, so, hey, this is this is a value that we certainly could provide. And I, I hope that you see that. And hey, why aren't you a member of the chamber? This is what we this do. This is what we do. Right? Right. And uh, it, it's good. There are so many different things the chamber could do. And so, and I think that there's that expectation, oh, we need them to be everything. And I and you have to stay focused because you can't be everything to everybody. I, she talk, Linda, you were talking about the the number of events coming down on them and really focusing. <laughs> there are so many events on Staten Island uh, yeah. business every night every night every of the night. week. You could go network somewhere. I find it. Forget about the information we're getting today. I always found that cumbersome. <laughs> People find it exhausting, and that's what we're hearing. We're hearing is pull back from these events and and, and be more focused on this the core services that you can deliver. You know, uh, the the toughest part about the chamber is is really trying to get it getting the word out. You know, really doing the marketing, and you know, within you know our our organization, we have about nine people on staff, which sounds like a lot, but it's not a lot for all of the actual things that we get involved in. I, I think what helps us is is our relationships so it's not only our local local relationships here with with uh, the, the other businesses that help each other but it's also our relationships with the elected officials and our all filing relationships I have to say are phenomenal in, in terms of my relationship that I have with the other four borough chambers and getting information from them you know and also we have, we're members of the uh, the business council of New York State the, the United States Chamber of Commerce the uh, Association of American Chamber of Commerce and all of them funnel information to us that's like I couldn't get on my own so our organization couldn't provide it but we have so much reach and so much access to information that we're able to kind of share all of that information with everybody and that's what really strengthens our ability to deliver some of the some of the key uh information that that we need to, to share with everybody yeah and in, in, in some cases it's a one-woman show uh you make yourself so accessible and we and we as members appreciate that it's important you're the face of this organization and have done for, for quite some time and, and that says a lot for the, the job that you've done and uh you know we don't get to say that often. So thank you for that. Thank you. Well, you know, I grew up at the chamber. I started there when I was, you know, 
pretty much like 25 years old and I had my three kids and I was the chamber bookkeeper back in the day. So it, it's been a number of years now. I've been there over 30 years at the chamber and it's, it's uh, you know, one thing about our community here on Staten Island, especially the business community, they really have each other's backs. I mean, everybody, you know, like if somebody has a problem, somebody else is willing to step in and help. And, and, and it's really connecting people. You know, that, that's where I feel that where I'm most effective when I connect people to the right people who, and who can help each other. That says volumes. And even you know, the community is so small, the business community is so small. We all know, and who doesn't, and if you don't know someone- Everybody knows everybody. <laughs> <laughs> and when you don't know someone, there's always that person you can reach. And now in these days, you shoot a text, hey, do you know so-and-so? How can I get? And boom, you've got an answer. And I can't tell you, within our own industry, I'm very lucky that we've got a great resource of friends uh, that we can we, we pull together. But in this community alone, sometimes I think we lose sight. Just because you own a restaurant or you own a bar doesn't mean that we couldn't offer assistance or, or in some way, shape, some or form, right. uh, we all have some sort of experience to share. And the beauty mm -hmm. of that is that we have the chamber as that that out the, the outlook to, to make that happen. So, hey, in in our business, in, again, for, forget about where we are today. Uh, the Staten Island business uh, climate has changed tremendously in the last ten years. Uh, so, mm -hmm. what is the chamber truly? People are being they're being creative, they're starting different types of businesses. Uh, are we, uh, is it good, is it, I think it's great, but are we seeing more people open and close doors faster right. from, the, from the chamber perspective? What, what's the business? Yeah, what I that? think outside of the current situation, we were starting to see a lot of things on the upswing on Staten Island. I mean, you, you I mean, retail shrinking all over, you know, all over the United States, but we saw more retail happening here. But I think that the interest that I see is more of kind of the creative class, like the artisan, like the individual kind of independent contractor type of business that you're starting to see here, which typically you see in Brooklyn and you see in Queens, but you don't see much of that here. So I think that's where where I, I'd like to see, you know, some expansion in, in business on Staten Island and, and the chamber actually focusing on some of those people that are trying to develop their businesses. I mean, you know, what's what's frustrating is you see some of the longtime businesses that don't want to continue and don't want to pass the business on to their kids because in New York City, it's a little bit of a struggle sometimes with all of the different, you know, the myriad of, of uh, just, you know, not even just the fines and the fees, but the, you know, the, the cost of doing business overall. But I, I do think that Staten Island is on the upswing. We started to see a lot of new types of businesses. We've been doing a lot of uh, work uh, specifically on the Bay Street Corridor, and we've seen a lot of new businesses pop up, you know, whether it's furniture and antique stores or, you know, artists. Um, there's, there's a lot of different things happening on the island. So I, I think we're starting to see a little bit of a change in the types of businesses that are out here. Personally, I'm not a big fan of all of the retail big box stores uh, that are coming out here. Um, you know, what, what kind of frustrates me is, is that um, you know, sometimes when we, we have our conversations with the city, they're like, oh, you know, the, we have to, you know, make sure that, you know, we're, we're, uh, we're offering, we're, we're making, uh, these, um, property owners that have these big retails, like, you know, Walgreens that go out that, you know, they want to keep the space vacant and they want to kind of tax them on the vacant space. And I'm like, but what about the small business owner that has a building on the block and he's running his business out of the place next door that he owns? I was like, because they can't afford to pay those kinds of taxes. So the city just needs to incentivize more small businesses to open shop. I mean, it, there is a ch there is a change in the fact that a lot of people are doing business online now. So it's you have to kind of convert and you have to be able to do e-commerce. You gotta, you really kind of got to be a jack of all trades because. Um, but I do think that what what small businesses can hang their hat on is the customer service. I mean, you, the, you know, when you walk in and they say, hey, Linda, how are you doing today? You know, what, what do you want? You want your half a pound of uh, turkey, <laughs> half a pound of uh, provolone? I got you, you know. I mean, I've just walked into to my usual guy and he said to me, oh, I see you're out. He said, you know, if you need anything, just call. We'll have it ready for you. You can just come and pick it up, you know. And you don't see that specifically when, you, when you're dealing with some of the larger businesses and the big boxes and, you know, the chains. Oh, that's so true. And, and don't get me wrong. I in, in some some of those stores, you, you build relationships, but it's not the same. Type but not, of it's not the same. Yeah, no, not at all. Not at all. Our our business our business is very large relationship business. 
Uh, and it, it's something that that's the beauty of this because of how many people we see on a, on a regular basis. We were joking earlier in the week that we're losing track of days, but it's because we don't see our regular customers. Right. So, <laughs> I know, I see so it's Tuesday. What day and I see so, you know, yeah, Tuesday night, week, or this or that. Yeah. <laughs> and, and you know what? When I walk into a restaurant or I sit at a bar and there's a drink in front of me without ordering at it, that's a wonderful thing. You don't get that. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> uh, when, when you talked about down in the downtown Staten Island, uh, that that whole area, it, it, you guys have done a great job at foster. You really have fostered and helping these small businesses take their concepts and grow. So lots of new restaurants, uh, lots of stores hanging on. You're seeing less for rent size, for lease signs. People are building up. Now, of course, I do believe there is the hope for the wheel and, of course, the mall and Outside of that, you guys have done a great job. Talk a little bit about the downtown project. Well, I mean, the, the frustrating part about the downtown project is kind of what you just talked about, the starts and stops. So, you know, there was this big excitement around the wheel and then the wheel didn't come. And then they, you know, even with the outlets, you know, the outlets, um, there was the announcement around that. But without kind of the, the surrounding components, the outlets have, you know, people have had some concerns about, you know, bringing new tenants into the outlets and actually getting like the food, uh, you know, and the entertainment up and running. I mean, I I believe they're working extremely hard. Joe Ferrara's working really hard to kind of get that off the ground. I'd like to see some more support from Staten Islanders to go down there to, but basically our, our position has been kind of how do we leverage those opportunities to get people to come down the corridor? So we've been, we've really been involved in working very closely with the businesses down there. Janet Dugo, who used to work for Business Trends, works for me. She's been working for me for about four years now. And she has a, a great connection with those businesses down there. I mean, even now we've kind of regrouped on kind of the, the we were working with them on, you know, um, uh, actually getting ready to, uh, to, to move forward with the, potentially creating a bid down there, but this has thrown like a little bit of a monkey wrench in that. So now we're just kind of taking the offerings that the chamber offers and we're offering it to those businesses down there. But, you know, all along we've kind of, you know, created uh, an environment where we've been cleaning the streets, we've been putting up street light, uh, Christmas lights, we've been putting up banners, um, we've been doing kind of community activities, we've had a weekend walk, we've had a uh, uh, Make Music New York where you go out to, you know, your, your bar, we've had a uh, the DOT uh, specific like weekend walk. So we've been doing a lot of activities to bring people down to that neighborhood uh, I think uh, in terms of, you know, just these bigger projects, it would just be nice to kind of see some of these things start to take hold uh, so that we can actually bring more tourists because we get so many tourists that come over the Staten Island Ferry. And, they, and what we've seen is a lot of the people that are exploring Staten Island are pleasantly surprised once they actually come down. But a lot of that has to do with them understanding what's here and and so we've been working with the borough president's office on you know kind of tourism to get people to to realize what restaurants are in the area uh we just actually partnered uh in just in december we found out uh that the the, the island the downtown staten island we partnered with the borough president's office the chamber and the siedc and we were actually able to bring 10 million dollars back to the district for improvement so we've been working on that uh for the last couple of months it was supposed to be all uh finalized by may i, I anticipate there's going to be some delay in that but that's like that money is to help with some of the wayfinding in the neighborhood. It's actually to help with some of the capital improvements, both to private businesses and to not-for-profits in the area. And just to kind of really create, I mean, the, the frustration was that was a little bit of the DOT. I was hoping to see more, um, more resources go to DOT to make improvements and the resources are there for DOT to receive. Unfortunately, DOT is it, it's just very uh, convoluted and complicated to get them to kind of tell us where they are at with existing projects and how this money could augment it and do it in the time frame that is kind of qualified by the governor's office. But, you know, it's, it's really more about kind of the fabric of the neighborhood, kind of taking those different businesses that are down there, not only the businesses that have started up, but the businesses that have been there for a long time and really showcasing them. And I think Janet's been doing a really good job at really promoting those businesses down that area, connecting people in that area, and even providing the chamber resources to, to a lot of those businesses. I think it's kicked them, I think it's kicked them in the to be better and do more. Uh, just in signage alone, 
I know you guys were offering grants for to clean up the outside of the buildings, to new signage. It makes a difference. I, yes. People, I think you take some of these things are things again we take for granted, but it, it makes a difference when you start driving. You go, oh wait a second, look at that, look at their new sign. Look, it's nice and clean outside. Yeah. And actually, part of that that downtown revitalization initiative where the ten million dollars, we're actually um, putting in a, a grant a program for more facade improvements, and but it would be expanded. So the the facade improvement program that we ran was primarily in Stapleton. This would pre pretty much run from uh, from St. George to Stapleton, so it would allow more. Uh, opportunity for businesses to get some grant funding. They'd have to put a little skin in the game, but they'd be able to get some grant funding to do facade improvements. No, it, it makes a, it makes a big difference. Yeah. And and you know, you talk about the Empire Outlets. If anybody hasn't been down there, it's absolutely beautiful. Uh, yeah, they, they have they're they're having some struggles and they're getting through it. I, I they're being creative. Uh, Joe, along with with Jacqueline, every time I turn around, there's something else happening. Else they're using on, space yeah. in different ways. They're they were bringing theater there. Uh, live music. They're trying and they want to bring people there, but it's beautiful. It's absolutely magnificent. There are there are some great stores. Yep. We need to support it because otherwise it won't be there. And so it, and um, where else where else can you go where you got views of Manhattan like that and go sit outside and go shopping? I mean, once some of the food comes comes online, it's it's really a nice place to just kind of hang out for a little while, have a cup of coffee, have a drink. I mean it's going to be as things start to come online, but like you said, I mean, I think it's important to support it because you really want to see something like that succeed. And and if that succeeds, everybody will trickle down into the card and you'll see more people visiting Staten Island and more people kind of venturing off that boat and really spending some time here. Yeah. If you don't support it, then the stores that are there now are going to close. And yeah. then so we're back in this vicious cycle. Uh, and it's no different than what we've seen here on Highland Boulevard uh, with mm -hmm. the Boulevard project, even next door. It, that project has pushed the others to be better. And so right. the, the Commons is going through a remodeling project. The other, the, the where Home Goods is has already gone through that. Mm -hmm. I'm concerned. I still still see too many for lease and for rent signs in that area. Um, I, I, don't, I don't know what that does, but what's happening in, in what you've done in downtown, how can we get that to go? How can we get the bids to be uh, continue to be more proactive? And pushing exactly what you're doing. New York's got a great bid. You've got one up on the South Shore. How do we make that infectious? How do we give that, get them? Uh, that think, the you know, I think a lot of it has to do with the city providing some resources to kickstart some of this stuff. And that's the only reason that we were able to do it was through a grant through the city, because with our own funds through the chamber, we wouldn't be able to do that. So, you know, the whole idea of creating the bid is so that they're, you know, it, it, it's an assessment that's collected amongst the property owners, but then it's spent on things that they can cooperatively work on like you know the cleaning and the advertising and the marketing and all of those efforts so um and it allows them to do it kind of on their own without having to ask people you know when when you had merchants associations you know you have a couple of key players on the block that really wanted to see change but then then when they ask other people to you know support that that effort by you know giving some money you, you know they would kind of you know, you'd get certain people that would support it and certain people that wouldn't, but everybody benefited from it. But it, it was hard on the person who was trying to do in the organization. But when you create a bid, you have a, an infrastructure that you have ongoing services. So, you know, in the rest of the city, there are bids, there are tons of bids. On Staten Island, you know, they're the, you know they've started to uh, increase. I mean, Steve Matteo has done a wonderful job in, in bringing bids to Staten Island. I mean, he's created the, the New York Lane bid. He's working with the merchants on Richmond Road. He's working with the merchants on Victory Boulevard. He has the South Shore bid in place. And I believe he has a West Shore bid in place, which are expansions. And, and the bids are really where, you know, you start to see, you know, a sense of community where they're, they're doing a lot of things in alignment, whether it's a, you know, a, a, you know, a, a restaurant crawl or, you, you, you know, it's just everything the marketing efforts, the cleanliness of the neighborhood, the plantings, all of those things. It just makes the makes everything look so much nicer. Um, I, I do think though that, you know, like before all of this happened, you know, the city, if, if you recall, but the mayor had actually in his state of the city talked about, you know, saving small businesses all of a sudden, you know, we're, we're starting to see a problem with the vacancies and all these different things. And, and actually myself and the other chambers had a, a meeting with him and, you know, told him like, you know, that some of the things that you're recommending are not the things that our businesses need help with. Our businesses need help with, you know, just the cost of doing business in New York City and, and a lot of the, the labor mandates and everything that's put on everybody, uh, you know, and the real estate taxes and all these different things all pile up. So it, it's, I think they need, New York needs to kind of 
make the environment easier for businesses to do business and less costly. And then you'd probably see a lot of people, but a lot of people don't want to, uh, you know, kind of uh, get themselves, um, you know, uh, extended by, uh, you know, opening businesses. So, so there's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of trepancy around it. So for somebody who might not understand, can you explain bid? What that oh, sure. So a bus it's, it stands for Business Improvement District. So basically what happens is, is you, you select like an area, it could be a block, but typically it's a continuous business corridor where there's a lot of businesses on that specific block. And then what happens is the business owners meet, uh, they have a number of meetings and they decide on actually a budget for the bid. So say the budget is $200,000. So $200,000 for a small block could supply streets, cleaning it could provide plantings it could provide banners it could provide a community event uh some marketing uh co-branded marketing for for that specific district and what the business owners do is they agree on this budget and then what they agree they agree to uh an assessment and the assessment can be based on basically you know the frontage uh times by a percentage or the commercial square footage and it can average out, it can average out, it could be, you know, under a thousand dollars, depending on how big the property is, it could go up. But for the most part, it's it's not it's it's over the course of the year. And what happens is if the business owners agree to that, they actually have to go through a whole public outreach phase. They have to get buy-in from a certain percentage of the business owners. And once they get buy-in, they can create something called a bid, which is his own kind of organization. It's a 501c3, I believe. And once they can move forward with that, they go through legislation with the city, it gets approved. And then when they actually get their tax assessment, their real estate tax bill, there's a specific small assessment on that bill which they pay on an annual basis but what it does is it funds this an entity they can hire whoever they want to run the bid and they fund that entity or that person and they execute but the money is there in perpetuity for them to do whatever they need to do so anything that they agree on within that budget and that budget can't change what they can do is if they don't spend the money they can determine what they can spend the money on or they could save it for something else but for the most part it allows them to provide these services ongoing rather than kind of going with you know hand in hat and asking each individual business to contribute that's great yeah, and so he, she mentioned is the, the one that's the richmond road merchants group uh, there's a bunch of them the one i see that the, the most active the, the, of the merchant groups uh, the victory boulevard guys they're always uh, there's always something happening here and it, it, even in new dorp and uh, there mm -hmm. gets them to work together so here we are in this in this current landscape of, of, of what's going on uh coronavirus uh this is taking a, this is taking a large toll on on our businesses and, and our members um what do, you, what do you, and you guys have been great. You, Dominic's been, uh, Dominic, I believe Dominic, has mm -hmm. been e emailing every day, yes, yes. the latest updates. And because it's changed, the bill got passed, but that didn't mean that the information stayed the same. The, the information keeps changing constantly and everybody doesn't know where to go. To, I'm up to here with information, trying to take it in and understanding. So I finally reached out to our banker and said, okay, I think we're at a point where we might be able to have a conversation. Uh, so mm -hmm. it's been a great resource and, and of course that's what you do what are you guys seeing what's the most commonly asked question that you're getting from your members at this point for, in, in, in for help i think there's a lot of confusion as to whether they should let people go and and, and put them on unemployment or not they're concerned that they might not be eligible for some of these grants if some people are are on unemployment and then in addition to that they're also concerned about the um, whether losing that employee. So basically, you know, there are people that, you know, want to reduce their the, the hours for their employees. And, and how can they get around that without losing their employees? There, there are some DOL has some work share programs that, that the employer can pay a portion and then DOL can give them partial uh, unemployment to kind of augment that so that they could get full salary. I think um, that's kind of the struggle is really because what I find is most people when they have good employees they don't want to lose them and they're really trying to figure out what's the best method of me hanging on to my employees so in most cases a lot of people haven't laid off because they're trying to see how long this is going to last and how long it's, they can hold on for um, but it's some of the new programs that are coming out what they're saying is if you can show that you um, 
you know, you had a loss in revenue. You you uh, you didn't pay people during a certain period of time, but by the end of June, you're at full capacity again with your employees. Then we can give you this grant, this loan, and possibly forgive the loan if you're at that same employee level. But the concern of the business owners are is. Are they going to be able to maintain that even if they kept everybody by June, depending on how long this lasts? So that's a lot of the questions that we're, that we're getting. Um, and there's also like a misconception because some of the people that um, that basically are have been told like, hey, um, you, you have to quarantine for 14 days because, you know, maybe you were exposed somewhere or maybe there was somebody in the business that had coronavirus, but there was somebody that maybe was exposed. If somebody is exposed, they're not entitled to the emergency paid family leave. They're entitled to, you know, their sick time. And then if they're sicker, they can take advantage of paid family leave. But that's like the basic thing that you would normally do. The only people that are covered for this emergency paid family leave, where it's augmented by DBL benefits, where they'll get full salary of up to $150,000 a year, are people who have actually gotten the coronavirus and have they have to have a certificate from the Department of Health or an entity that certifies that they actually had coronavirus. So that's kind of a misconception amongst businesses because if you quarantine somebody for 14 days, that doesn't mean that they're, they're entitled to these benefits. You've got to figure out what mechanisms you have currently in place that's going to cover somebody, you know, that's basically, you know, out sick or whatever the case may be, or you have to decide whether you want to pay them because now they're being quarantined for 14 days. So, you know, we're hearing a lot of uh, concern around that. So it's tangled. It's yeah, it's tangled. And honestly, one of the things that you said, Frank, is really important. And I've been telling a lot of people this is, you know, there's, there's two programs out through SBS right now through the New York City Department of Small Business Services. But they're going to be bridge programs to these SBA programs. So there's one SBA program out. Uh, I believe it's called uh, um, IDLE, which is, uh, I guess, I forget. The, it's employer retain. Um, uh, what is it called? It's an economic injury disaster loan program. So that program is out and we, we did a webinar on that, but there are new programs coming out like this paycheck protection program and people need to understand those programs. But the paycheck protection program, from what I understand, our local lenders are going to be able to participate in that. And some of them are already SBA uh, like qualified lenders. So from what I understand, by early next week, you'll be able to go to your local bank. And if they are, have applied and they have the opportunity to apply to be part of the program this week, you should be able to get information from them about those programs. And you should be like if you have a specific account that you work with, if you have an attorney that you work with, you should have be having conversations with them about what program benefits you the most and what which one, because the same program isn't going to work for everybody. You know, we have the, the chamber can kind of direct you point you in the right direction. There's a local small business development center at the College of Staten Island, which Dean Balsamini runs, which is a great resource because they basically have, uh, they worked on all the SBA loans post Sandy and they do that every day. So you do have to apply online, but they can at least help you if you have any questions. You also have Department of Small Business Services that's a resource and they can also help you too. So there's a lot of help out there. It's just, you know, you don't want to kind of jump into anything blindly. You want to really make sure that you look at your options and you figure out what's the best approach for you. Some businesses don't have that luxury. They're really struggling right now. I mean, you see it like specifically in the rest restaurant and hospitality industry. Industry. For them, I would suggest that, that they look at the SBS loans now as bridge loans and kind of see if they could get themselves in the pipeline for something to get some relief that hopefully will come rather quickly. But I understand these paycheck protection loans that are going to come out next week are going to be accessible fairly quickly, but it's just a matter of whether they suit you well enough. And then I've also heard that there are going to be other programs coming out from the federal government that will roll out. You know, this is like the third program, this most recent CARES Act, but there's going to be like a, a fourth, a fifth, a sixth, because people are asking like, well, what if my revenue isn't back to where it was in six months from now? And what if I, what if I can't hold on to those employees after June? So there's a lot of kind of unanswered questions and it's, it's really kind of just, you know, I'm sifting through it, but that's where we can be helpful at the chamber, at least where, you know, getting information from, uh, you know, sources from Washington and sources from the state level, which and the city level, which can be helpful, at least in kind of deciphering some of it. Yeah. Yeah. Does that make sense? <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's complicated. It's, it's, we're both going through it. So it's, uh, 
it's not easy. And it's, it, yeah. it's funny because, you know, I've got a, a group of friends in our industry that we've got this group chat that's been going on since day one. And uh, I laugh because we're going, we're having the same issues, Boeing centers throughout the country that have been closed for a period of time, similar number of uh, employees, just different size businesses equitable to their, to their area. And I look at, we've just been talking about all this. And even with people here, every day, another email comes and I just, you're just so consumed in it where even as a family, we sit back and go, we're playing the waiting game. And so we can see what more and just see, make sense of it, but it's tough. And, and I would, I've been making that recommendation. Don't jump too far. Let's do, take your accountant's recommendation based yep. on your business. Talk to your attorney if there, if you have other yeah. concerns. Uh, one step at a time, because many people have made very rash decisions in a panic and we're panicking and I, I don't, yes, we have lots to panic about. There's a lot of concern. I just worry that some of us maybe panic too quickly and uh, without understanding true, hey, we're closed for four days. Okay, that's one thing. We went to Sandy, we were closed for eight days. That was a whole, that was a different, you know, electric, different type of situation. Here we are day 15. Uh, 16 or whatever it is with no end in sight and so this is truly the land of the unknown and the more people that we ask questions uh, they don't know either none of us know yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we're, we're trying to make the best of it and try to understand it so uh, you're you're spot on and and, and, I, and I appreciate because that's that's the work that you guys do and, and we see it and you guys the information that you've been given us has been very consistent and that's the most important thing if you want to read something, keep consistent and keep going through. And it looks like all the other entities are doing the same thing now. Uh, but it's, you know, it's it's unknown. It is truly yeah, unknown. And we have to make the best of it. Uh, you, you, you had something? Yeah. Uh, I, I think that personally, our social norms are going to change because of this. Our business landscape is going to change tremendously. How we do business. Uh, we're in a little bit of a different situation. We've got hundreds of people in a building at a time. They may tell us that we can't, I hate to say something like this, but they may tell us we can't open till after every little at a time, getting groups of 10 to 20 to 25, 30 people in one place at a time. That is, I think, my true concern. I think the theater's concerns uh, where we have lots of people at one time. So we have to, we have to, hey, band together and stay strong through it uh, and do what we can for each other. and. Uh, we've talked about this, the, the restaurants, and uh, I don't. You want to touch a little bit on the restaurants that are members? What are you hearing from them? Because uh, this is this again. Yeah, I, I changed their been hard. It's been hard for them. Some of them can handle it, and some of them can't because they've been forced to do drop off and delivery. And, and I know some of them have closed because they just don't find that lucrative enough for them to do that. And a lot of them are really, really trying very hard, and they have gotten a lot of support from the Staten Island community. Um, one of the things that, that we're actually working on right now with the borough president's office, which is kind of cool and trying to bring some business to our, so to some of our members is, um, we're actually rolling out a campaign, which is, uh, you know, uh, feed the front line, uh, which the borough president's office spearheaded with the UFT and with the, the nurses association and with CTV. And they've actually come up with some initial money. And so we've actually starting, uh, this week on Wednesdays and Saturdays, we're providing lunch to the nurses at both Staten Island University Hospital and Richmond University Medical Center. And I've seen a lot of actually uh, efforts, um, just not not specific like a, a you know a larger effort like this where it's. But what we are doing with this effort is we're we actually have it up on the chamber's website. So if you want to go and you want to pay for like seven meals, it's thirty five dollars, and you can make a contribution. And what we're trying to do is garner more money so that we can continue to feed the front line and, and really show our appreciation for everybody that's working in the system that, that, you know, really is having a really difficult time with the managing their hours and finding something to eat. I, I you know, what, what I've, we've been asked to do is kind of just put together like a box lunch, something that they can't heat up, but if they're on all this gear, they can take two minutes and have something to eat and feel like, Hey, somebody's taking care of me. It's a small gesture, but it's a gesture. But I, I do see that there are a lot of like other individual groups. I mean, I saw somebody post the other day, a list of, Staten Island residents, restaurants that are actually donating goods to the hospitals. Um, but 
anywhere where we can. I've, se I've seen some of the Rotary Clubs um, purchasing food and dropping it off to first responders and things like that. So anywhere we can support our local restaurants in, in kind of coordinating those efforts, I think that's like a positive thing because, again, you know, it's, there's a difference between having an open restaurant, full restaurant, and your staff on board. A lot of these people, the staff have converted to delivery drivers. They couldn't keep all of their staff. They can only keep the key course staff and maybe a couple of delivery people. But, you know, it's, it's a totally have to, they totally had to shift their business model. And, you know, they're still waiting for, you know, more relief because not only are these loans and things hitting them, you know, what we're hearing is I can't pay my rent. Or I can't pay my mortgage. And then you've got the property owner who can't pay his mortgage unless he gets paid by the tenant and he can't pay his real estate taxes. So there's some push up at the state level to try and defer some of those things. Uh, but we haven't seen any traction on it yet. But, the, you know, the, the, I would say out of all the industries, the restaurant and hospitality industry has been devastated. I mean, they really have had to. They're hanging on by a thread They're, You know, and the people that we've reached out to, to say, hey, can you provide these meals? They are like thrilled to pieces with the small piece of business that we're bringing them. But they need they need the community to support them. They need they really need, uh, you know, uh, people not to be afraid to, to order out, you know. You know, I, I understand people, you know, want to cook at home and they also can't always afford to, to eat out. But if you can do it once a week or if you can even do it, you know, once every two weeks, it will make the world a difference for the local businesses to, to help them hang on anyway. Yeah, we've been talking about that all, all week long. And uh, we're, we're, we're fortunate here. Uh, Marco and Tina here at Gennaro's have, have been open for, for takeout and delivery. Uh, and, and our folks have been great. Um, and we can't say thank you enough to those that are supporting But You know, you're operating the business yourself. A lot of times yeah. it's the business owner now operating the kitchen, operating the, the front. And so, yeah, we've done the same thing here. Uh, our, our counter staff are making deliveries. It's not the, it's not yeah. the regular, it's just not the regular uh, job. It's not the regular business, but we're, we're doing what we can. And fortunately we've been able to uh, make those deliveries of, of pizzas and food to the, those in the front lines. Uh, we've got a, a core group of folks that have made some donations online and uh, had said thank you. And so we've been doing that as we go along. And uh, we, again, couldn't do it without the support of everybody around us as well. Uh, it, it's been it's been greatly received. Uh, the only thing that we've learned is that they need dinner, not lunch. They, they, they get overwhelmed with lunch. With uh, yeah. They're not, getting, they're not dinner deliveries. So, and, and, and for, also, uh, in a conversation with Diane Arnett at uh, Community Health Action, she was on uh, this past week as well. And something that's come about after the convers after her being on, they we have people in our communities that can't get their regular resources and can't get fed right, right. because they can't enter a building. They can't enter. To, yeah. They would go visit the, their spot on Bay Street to go to get a meal, and uh, they can't go inside. They can't see those services. Those the homeless on the streets. Uh, they're not getting the services they need. So there's also a need for to-go lunches and, and to-go dinners, quick, quick and grab. Uh, so that's something else that's got to be addressed. And I know she's working She's working on something, at least for her clients, but throughout the Staten Island community, there's something that we're going to have to do. Yeah. Uh, there are people out there that can't afford to, to get that meal and don't have access because they can't walk into a facility or the place that they would go is now closed. Yeah, and, and I think so, so, so the food pantries need a lot of help, too, because there are a lot of unemployed people now that need to try and access some of those resources. So I know I've seen some some Project Hospitality doing some specific outreach. I've seen some of the Rotary Clubs doing specific outreach. Um, and I know that, um, you know, I've seen some of our elected officials involved in that as well. But it's really important because, um, you know, we, we all have to take care of each other. And, you know, there are people out there that, you know, that that you know may have gotten laid off or there are people out there that you know they can't buy the groceries and stock up for two weeks so we need to take them into consideration and figure out you know how as uh, you know maybe some of the businesses or some of the people that haven't lost their jobs can kind of support them and figure out ways where we can be more helpful on that end um in terms of uh in terms of the food pantries and that that's something that we haven't got very involved in but i can certainly bring that up and talk about it internally to see you know at least where to direct people and to see because I, I know meals and wheels was looking for people to deliver meals they were looking for an increase because that's something that they that they uh 
you know, they actually have people that are elderly that deliver the meals, so they needed an increase in capacity there. But I've heard, you know, some of our members, uh, I, I spoke with Lana from the HIC, and they were talking the Home Improvement Contractors Association, and they were asking, hey, how can we be helpful? Can we deliver things? Can we do things? So there are people out there willing to do, you know, in, in this age of social media, it's put that question up there. If you're an organization that's providing these services and you need people to, to drop things off at people's houses where they can't come into those food pantries or those soup kitchens, there's a lot of people out there that would be willing to do some of that work for you. That's great. I, we, we say it over and over all these conversations. This community uh, is so giving and we're so lucky to have uh, to be in this community and we're a lot of people we're almost yeah. a half a million strong and yeah. lots of small businesses and uh, everybody wants to help someone and, and, and it's great that we have that uh and it's again it's fo it's groups like the chamber and and the, working alongside the small businesses that make that happen so linda yeah. thank you so much for, thank you, linda. for being here with us today well, uh, thanks for inviting me we appreciate you sorry i wasn't more fun <laughs> Oh, <laughs> good. It's all good. Oh, this is what we want. You know, we've been we started. Then, we're gonna like let me do like virtual both virtual bowling, like with we. You know, we <laughs> <laughs> we, should, we should do a we should do a week. Yeah, oh my God, it's fun. <laughs> <laughs> you're right. no, we, you're all this other stuff. You're the you're, you're first. the first one. I know you're sick and tired of just <laughs> doing this. You know what? Just make me look skinny. <laughs> <laughs> we uh. We started this with the uh, opportunity to want to keep communicating with uh, with our fans, our customers, and our community, uh, but share different messages. We've had pro bowlers on. We've had leaders in our community, and it's it's important to have you to share that. Yep. Uh, so anybody that tunes in, whether they're tuning in live or they're going to watch it later, uh, which we do get a lot of people catching up later, uh, it's great. So we really appreciate you taking the time. Is there anything else you, you may have want to share while we're, while you, while you have while you have an audience and while you're sitting with us? I think just the kind of the final message is, is that, you know, it's tough for all of us to kind of not be working in our businesses, but it really is important that everybody stay home and, you know, enjoy the time that you have with your family, you know, try to kind of hunker down a little bit. And hopefully the more we hunker down, the more this will pass, more. the sooner this will pass because, you know, and, and just in terms of anybody that's struggling with anybody, anything out there, you know, know that you have the community behind you to help you and, and don't be afraid to reach out. But you know, all we can do is kind of hang on and just take it slow and, and just hope for the best. Yeah, I envision when this is all over, everybody's going to be so cooped up. They want to get out of the house. They're going to be running out. And we're not. <laughs> we're almost not going to know what to do at all. I think the will have a gigantic event at that point in time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, event. Forget about it. No, it's true, though. And it, we're going to have to. And this is the... It's been great to be home with my family, but oh, and I know I know they're they're watching or they're gonna watch this later, and I keep telling them they're driving me crazy. And fortunately, I can, I can fortunately I can escape for a couple few hours, coming here, checking on the building, catching up, getting ahead. Uh, it's been great sitting. I don't know to your point before. I don't know what going home early for dinner is. Yeah. I cooked a few times this week. Family dinner. I don't know what that is anymore. It's a little strange being in my house with light coming in the windows <laughs> <laughs> you know what the funny part is is that when i'm on all these zoom calls you know, you see you see somebody's you hear somebody's kids screaming in the background or somebody walking past the, back of the camera so you get to start to learn a little bit more about everybody's personal life <laughs> yeah, yeah without it oh that, that's very true we've had some children on, on our show poor, poor pam Silvestri joined us and and her boys came in and they're they're funny. awesome but they were hysterical they just they just wanted to get to the time with mom very funny and us uh, so and then even we're catching up on tv we started we I, this was astonishing last night we finished the three seasons of the marvelous mrs nasal ah 20, cool. When you put that in perspective, that's 26 hours of TV <laughs> that we binged watch in a week. <laughs> you have to take an average of 15 minutes off each hour, probably. Oh, no. It's actually, is it 46 there, Some of them are anywhere from 46 to, to an hour. Plus, then I'm taking into consideration pausing it, right, using the restroom, right. going to grab a glass of tea, <laughs> filling your wine. <laughs> At least you don't have to worry about all those commercials. Yeah. Um, and you don't have to watch the news. <laughs> yeah. so we're trying to stay away from the news. All right, so what quick question. Are you catching up on any TV that you you haven't been able to? Not yet, but my son's telling me to watch Netflix that Tiger King. What is it called? Tiger King? 
yeah, yeah, yeah. everybody's talking about it. So he's like, you got to watch my, my other son says, mom, you're not going to like, it. it's too crude. I want, I watched it. So we'll see. I, I, I have been watching the Staten Island girl on American Idol to see how she pans out. Um, but other than that, I really, you know, I actually like this is us. That's one of the shows that I watch. It's on regular TV, but I, I got to get more into the binge, uh, the binge watching, just have it by the time I drop from the chamber work and I kind of cook dinner and, you know, sit, it's usually around 10 o'clock at night and I'm exhausted. <laughs> Yeah, uh, make yourself a martini and watch whatever. You yeah, have. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Drinking those last Coronas that I have in the refrigerator. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. Well, thank you again. Go back to your work. We appreciate it. And uh, anytime thank you need you. Tell you where to find us. Yes, thanks, Linda. Well, keep up the good work, guys. Great show. Thanks for having me on. Appreciate okay. it. Thank, thank you. you. Bye. Right. Talk to you. Take care. Bye bye. Oh, you know that was a. a a nice breath of fresh air to, to close it out. Yeah. I, I, Linda is a great source of, of information. And I, I said it while she was there. She's been so accessible to us as members. Yeah. Anytime you need something, she she pops in and she's available. And uh, we appreciate that. And it goes on. She's done so much in our community uh, that probably doesn't go, go seen. So thank you, Linda. And thank you to the chamber. A wealth of knowledge, too. I mean, obviously, all we needed to do was prime her with a question and she <laughs> she was off so she's um if you own a small business and you do have any concerns or questions i would definitely consider reaching out to the chamber and becoming a member if you're not because they really it really is uh an organization that's worth belonging to yeah, and she mentioned she mentioned the resources that are out there so the sbdc uh here on staten island the small business development center their office is in the in College, College of Staten Island, uh, and they're those guys are great, um, Rich and, and Joe, and so any and Dean, you need something, they're there, and so be sure to use that if, if you are, you are in need. The SIEDC is another good resource for uh, for their members, of course, but uh, we're all trying to work together here, yeah. so uh, we need them to have a strong business community. She talked about Tiger King as we watched, we we tuned in last night. We watched two episodes of the Tiger King. Uh, we're documentary people. We like that. We like that stuff. I didn't know anything about this crazy guy uh, before. Uh, it's it's good. Is it's, it really good? It's it's good. It's good TV. That's um, mindless. You kind of laugh at what you're watching, uh, but it's good. It, I'm it, a documentary it, person it too, but I me. just I just can't. I I don't know. I just can't. <laughs> I see the memes and I. I I, I just can't bring myself to watch it. There's only like there's only seven episodes. It's 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 it's, it's time that you we're not going to. What are we doing right now? Watch something. Well, I, I have six more <laughs> seasons of Mad Men to watch. I started watching Mad Men, and uh, so that's what I'm going to be watching and catching up on. Um, Mad Men it was a good series. It was. It was actually. It was striking. I, I, I'm hoping it's realistic. Not intended. Yes. <laughs> um, Everybody smokes in that. I can't believe how many every in every scene everyone is smoking, and it, it, it's a kind of a stark reality to realize that if that was true in that era, that things have changed. Oh yeah, well, Mrs. The marvelous Mrs. Maisel, Maisel, the same thing. The, the music, music's fantastic. Everybody has a cigarette it's in the crazy. hospital. That's it's just it, it's, it yeah. was a way of life. It, it, it is uh, that is a interesting take back. Think about what was here. Oh, I, I know. I uh, remember as a kid walking into this place and even bowling on the green. In this place on a Thursday night, you couldn't you see could the front you counter. You couldn't say. You couldn't say. Uh, it, it, between pipes, cigars, cigarettes. Oh, I'm, I'm glad. I'm glad those days are over. Also, <laughs> yeah, I really glad. am glad. Uh, and more. And as a result, more families came out or doing things. That, it's not even. Nobody even questions it anymore. Yeah. Now we just battle the electronic cigarette thing. But yeah. Whatever. Hey, so thank you for, for watching. We've got a, a, the rest of the week is is pretty busy for us here at Live from Rabs. Yes. As long as we can get on time, which we plan to. Uh, we have to apologize to Linda. Poor Linda had a hard time getting in today. Uh, but we and thought so it was we. us. And so it, did it, we. So did we. It was, it was whatever. So uh, thank you for hanging in there, Linda. Uh, well, the rest of the week tomorrow. we got a great show tomorrow. Stephanie Johnson, PWBA champion, is going to be joining us tomorrow. Uh, get your questions ready for Stephanie. Hopefully, she'll discuss her rise through the ranks uh, up to champion of PWBA champion and maybe give us a little insight 
of what she thinks is going to be happening going forward with the the professional women's tour champion uh frank disocio from the bpaa is going to join us talk about the bowling industry uh we also have our weekly check-in with pam food thursdays it's not it's not an f it's not food friday it has to be food thursday uh so ch- pam's going to check in keep tuning in with her every day she's got some great updates on the on staten island's food scene and uh, we end we end the week with uh joanne bros uh from wagner college the uh new program the new bowling program that's going to be oh, starting this year and we'll talk to him a little bit about what you know what he's looking forward to in this this coming year and how he's been able to build that program from scratch and also joining us will be janine murphy who is a from neuter high school she's a social worker and a coordinator of the autism spectrum program there at um Newdorp. and she can give us a little insight of maybe how we can all deal with having kids at home or just being at home ourselves and what we might what frankie might be going through uh janine's gonna have a different perspective of that for sure janine <laughs> you will leave friday's we love uh, show with a little extra skipping your step i'm sure it's gonna be talking about her famous mom too <laughs> uh, and saturday is pro bowler saturday as we've dubbed it uh the ballards are on with us carolyn and Dell are going to join us uh saturday so uh we hope that you shoot in some questions for our for our guests this week if you want to send them in advance wonderful if you don't make sure we know you're commenting here we're, we're trying to keep up with the comments and the questions uh so thanks again for joining us we're looking I forward just to have a wonderful one more week. thing oh, i would like yeah. to i'm sorry uh yes. talk to before we go it's yeah. okay frank it's um, been a trying week here it's, it's, it's um it, it, you know we come in here every day and we try to be upbeat and every once in a while uh you know we'll hear news about something or somebody reach out to us and um we i have spoken to a couple of nursing homes on staten island my mom uh, is a volunteer at one of them and i have a couple of friends who work at another one and they are in dire need of uh masks and gloves uh if there is somebody who would reach out to me and help me coordinate some kind of uh a collection or maybe a contact of where we can find this uh it it's really sad these people are and i'm not saying the hospitals are not bad and i know that they are struggling but these nursing homes some of them have no masks and no gloves and they are dealing with a lot of residents some of them are families and i know we want them all to be as safe as possible it's a high risk population that they're dealing with and a lot of these people are leaving there and going home to their families and they're doing it every day just like the nurses and doctors and healthcare workers in the hospitals are so um if somebody wants to reach out to me and help me coordinate something to get some supplies into the hands of these nursing homes i would really appreciate it um we can come up with something i'm sure um and that's that's what i got i don't want to end on a down note but you can also watch some good news on youtube <laughs> by john krasinski which is hysterical i believe there's only one episode so far but uh it's pretty funny and after i plugged it yesterday it was on the news last night and i believe they plugged it on the today show today they saw it here first they saw you saw it here first <laughs> they know we're rating bonanza so we are rating bonanza first. that's why that's why <laughs> well thank you Naz. You're uh welcome. thank you for sharing that that that, that is important and uh, if there's anybody that can reach out and, and uh, supply some information and help us out that'd be great uh you could reach us here uh like share if you're watching on youtube subscribe uh again thank you linda and and, and Naz. That was awesome. <laughs> we'll see you tomorrow. Bye. <laughs>